as a pro tip, if you're ever asked to give a speech in the demilitarized zone between South Korea and North Korea, you really have only one thing you've got to remember, and that's the difference between South Korea and North Korea. South Korea are your allies. They're the good guys. North Korea are the bad guys. That's the one-man nuclear psycho state. If you can keep that distinction straight, you can do what you like in the rest of the speech. Lame golf anecdotes, a North Korean, a South Korean, and an Irishman walk into a bar. Uh, so with all that in mind, I give you the alleged deputy leader of the free world. So the United States shares a very important relationship, which is an alliance with the Republic of North Korea. Aha, uh -huh. so Joe Biden has an alliance with Kim Jong-un. Did Kamala Harris misspeak? Or is it, in fact, the most plausible explanation for the madness all around us? Uh, the radiators in the lobbies and corridors of all Germany's public buildings have been turned off, and in the places where they're still permitted, such as the drafty waiting rooms of 19th century railway stations, the maximum temperature is 19 Celsius. That's 66 Fahrenheit. By the way, Brexit was passed, what is it, a couple of years back now? We should be back on Fahrenheit. Real men, even real German men, shiver in Fahrenheit. The French have gone one better. Uh, maximum permitted temperature in public buildings is 18 Celsius. That's 64 Fahrenheit. Uh, who's going to be the first European nation to go below 60 in public buildings? We are living in an age of punitive progressivism. You have to be colder, go hungrier, live smaller, shrunken lives in order that Western governments can achieve their public policy priority of reducing sea levels in the Maldives in the next century. After the last three years, do you think there's the least chance of them being able to pull that off? Do you think the purported deputy leader of the free world could find the Maldives on a map? She can't tell the difference between North Korea and South Korea when she's actually standing on the border of North and South Korea. Is this newly revealed alliance between Kamala Harris and Kim Jong-un behind the weirdest news of the week? Yesterday we discussed the three leaks in the Nord Stream pipeline that are filling the Baltic Sea with explosive gas. The Swedish Coast Guard now says there's a fourth leak. The biggest breach is, look at this, the biggest breach is causing toxic methane bubbles over a half mile diameter. The Swedes, Danes, the Germans all agree this was sabotage. Uh, the two explosions uh, caught by seismologists would have required either a submarine or a ship and divers to arrange. It's odd, odd, that no such craft have been detected in a world in which the French Revenue Service has drones flying over Provence to see whether you're building a swimming pool in the back garden without paying the relevant permit fees. We are deep in what the old CIA counterintelligence chief Jim Angleton knew as the wilderness of mirrors. The conventional wisdom from the respectable media is that Putin uh, just blew up his own pipelines. Why would he do that? On the very day the Nord Stream system got blown to kingdom come, a new pipeline opened from Norway to Poland. If the Kremlin really has the urge to blow up pipelines in the Baltic, why wouldn't they blow up the Norwegian one? rather than their own, especially when the Scandinavians tell us no investigators can get near enough uh, in those gas-filled waters to figure out whose fingerprints are on the crime. As you know, I am fiercely opposed to His Majesty's government in the United Kingdom deporting one of His Majesty's Australian subjects, Julian Assange, to the United States where he will die very quickly in the care of the dirty, stinking, rotten, corrupt U.S. Department of Justice. Mr. Assange is a lefty, but he has been abandoned by the new left in London and Sydney and New York, so it's left to right-wing nutters like me to put in the occasional word for him. Here's what he said about Afghanistan 11 years ago. The goal is to use Afghanistan to wash money out of the tax bases of the United States, out of the tax bases of European countries, through Afghanistan and back into the hands of a transnational security elite. That is the goal 
i.e. the goal is to have an endless war, not a successful war. Uh, the goal is to have an endless war, not a successful war. That was Julian Assange in 2011. An endless war, not a successful war. So the United States staggered on in Afghanistan for another decade, at which point a nation that accounts for 40 percent of the planet's military spending uh, contrived to lose to goat herds with fertilizer. Odd. And then barely had they scuttled out of Kabul, then a new war began, this time in Ukraine. And whether or not this will prove a successful war, it's certainly beginning to look like the usual Pentagon endless war.